Hello and welcome to the next section in the tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to look at creating a man-made setting such as a camp or encampment by the lakeside. Now I'm not sure what it's going to look like yet but I'm thinking tents, I'm thinking campfires, uh, boxes and barrels to store provisions and other sort of um, temporary stopping location so the first thing I like to do in this situation is have a look to see what I've got to play with now as I said previously I'm going to try and stick to stock assets so everyone can come along with it the um, tutorial and so let's have a look at fixtures I don't see these appearing at a lakeside camp so I'll have a look at buildings Ah, this looks more likely. Um, tent canvas. Oh yes, perfect. So, with an entity on our cursor, by pressing the R key, we can rotate by a set degree, uh, 45 degrees. No. Yes, 45 degrees. It's just similar both sides. Um, have you all shift? And press R, we can move in single degrees for the fine tuning of it. Um, left click to place and left click again to highlight, and you can use the widget tool to rotate to have um, the finest fine tuning of all. Now, I don't know if you noticed what just happened there, but when I placed down the tent, the floor shifted to make the tent sit on level ground. The net result of this was that the trees lost their um, nice uh, uh, formatting we gave them uh, because the floors had shifted to make it flat and therefore the roots are now on the ground. In situations like this we can either readjust the trees or not have the tent mess with our floor. Now I'm going to load this back in because I don't want the tent to mess with the floor. And to get around that we can do one of two things. We can either edit the FPE file which is the data file which controls all the extraneous information about the entity or if you don't want to start digging in FPE files there's a little cheat you can do which is take your tent place it down here let it affect that floor and then bring it across and position it manually in that respect you can have your tent however you like it without it messing up the floor now if you put him here like that, and I'm just going to make sure he isn't levitating because in my experience tents tend not to levitate and you can see there's a bit of light coming in so if we just drag it in a little bit like so it's flush to the floor and you still have enough text detail now there's a root poking through here so I'm just going to take the tent and move it away from the root like that and just make sure there's no plants that have been severed right here there's a plant sticking through so we'll just move that plant a little bit so that there's a little cluster of them yeah so this is also why I don't use a lock tool um, because you constantly fine tuning to get the best out of your level. Now, as was shown in an earlier tutorial, there's a jagged line here, which is a bit more forgivable on a man-made object, because man-made objects tend to be more machined, angular, but not so much tense. So there's a thing we can do here, which is to blend it into the floor by using other entities similar to what we did with the um, the grasses and the bushes 
on the roots of the trees. And I will cover this now. The trick here is to break up your lines um, so the brain can't match patterns. Now before I do that, and because I like where I've put this, and in light of the recent hiccup, I'm going to save and increase the iteration by one. So if I do make a mistake, I can come back to this state. Now, when I look at this tent, I'm thinking barrels and boxes. And that's the biggest thing that's going to be here. So that's the first thing I'm going to put on. So a new entity, boxes and barrels. That's very convenient. So let's start with, um, it's a tent, so let's say a wicker basket. I can't see too many algorithms here. And holding shift, I will start placing some baskets down. I'll put one there and maybe one back here. Now, I want them a little bigger than that. So if I highlight them, um, and increase the scale factor, now you notice then the increased scale based on their own particular axes, not a shared axes. So if you're going to increase the scale like that, you must remember to manually go in and move them when you're finished. Now, that's nice. As you can see already, you've broken up the lines. It's still quite obviously a line here, but here it's not so obvious. And I've just spotted a dip down here where the floor is going down with the tense knot. So we're going to cover that now with something long and low, like a table. So where would I find a table? The table would be uh, furniture. Hmm. Oh, camp bed. That's good. Oh, I wouldn't really have a camp bed on the slope down into a lake unless someone's playing a practical joke. I do like it, so I'm going to pop it there for now and find something more suitable. A pew, mattress, no. Another camp bed? Hmm. This one seems to be a litter style camp bed, so we'll just pop that there for now. Um, burlap sack, that might work. Pressing R to rotate, yeah. I like the sack, we'll use him. Um, table. Let's have a look. It's uh, that's more of a, it's more of an asylum sort of thing. It looks like a medical field with straps. Not what you'd find in a campsite, really. Um, no piano. Teapot. Yep, we'll have a teapot. Now. You'll notice I'm just putting things on the floor as I find them because I want to use them. The reason I'm doing that is that once they're in the scene, at any point, I can delete these and they're going to be here for me to take. So I don't have to look through the list or remember where they were. Now if I deleted that and then saved the scene, it would disappear from this list because it is no longer represented in the, in the world. But as long as I have one copy of it in the world, it will always be in the side list. I'm going to get rid of that camp bed because it's the same as that camp bed. I don't need two of the same type. I can just use that one. And when I save and reload, this will be gone, but that will remain. So, I'm still looking for a little table. I'm finding nothing suitable in furniture. But I have found a small cooking pot. I'll have that. Um, miscellaneous, massive chess, that would be an interesting camping trip, but perhaps not today, or maybe a gigantic night, you know, that could be um, an easter egg, for finding the chess pieces in your game, not this game though, so we'll get rid of that, 
Um, scenery, maybe. Ah, rocks, good. Uh, dumpster, perhaps not here. Skull, maybe half buried. So, uh, rocks, no. Ah, sandbags. Hmm, that kind of fits with the theme of the tent. So, if I hold and shift, and then maybe place it down here. And then we can go in and fan tune. Just bring it down slightly. So it starts going to the floor. Because sandbags can conform to the floor and take that kind of thing better. There we go. So inside there's no poking. And outside it breaks it up nice. So while I'm here, I'll take my sack. And I'll place it here. Um, no, I actually could do a little table for all the cooking stuff now. So, let's find a little table. Sci-fi. Hmm, classics. Ah, classic medieval. Love a table in medieval. Oh. Furniture. Aha, in table stool. I can see that at a campsite. You'd take some stools with you. Now, the old trick with the flowers where you hold in shift and R to make it spin and then left clicking places down some randomly positioned shows. I'll then take that off and put it on here. Now notice because of extracted it won't find the level. But I can get a new one and it will find the level. So I'll put that in there and we'll put a kettle in there. So it's like someone's going to be cooking in a minute. And I'll have one. So put that there. There we go. Just a little little background colour. There. So that looks a bit more lived in. And next we shall do inside of the tent. Okay, this is just a campsite, so if we extract this bed and place one here and one, no, it's level, we'll put one there and we'll put another one, whoops, that's the one I don't like, uh, those are the one I like. On there, you can be rough with your placement. I mean, this is quite a rough little campsite. One there, so let's make sure they're not levitating because this is very even ground. Yeah, nice. So, this is a little tent with some sleeping beds in. Like right inside the tent is some sacks, some baskets, a sack possibly with flour or grains. A little pot and a kettle, some stools. All that's really missing is a campfire. Um, and maybe some. I don't know actually. So I'll stop the video here. If anyone would like to comment what they'd like to put on this camp, I will incorporate that into the next video. So on that point, I'll leave it here and I shall see you next time.